Artificial intelligence is already disrupting every industry we thought it would never touch. Creative industries like art, music, movies, and video games, all of which are hundreds of billions of dollar industries or more. But just a few days ago, NVIDIA came out with an incredible research paper focused on generative AI for video, a paper that could change everything. So in this episode, I want to show you the state of the art in a few different areas of design, and then explain how NVIDIA's latest AI breakthrough might be the key to bringing them all together. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. I want to start this video in an unusual place, the body cam footage of a tactical police officer that was dispatched to a nearby abandoned warehouse. This video took the world by storm last month because it's actually from a video game called Unrecord, which is built in Unreal Engine by a small French indie game studio named Drama. And Drama is exactly what their gameplay video started. The graphics are so photorealistic that many publications thought it was an outright scam, claiming that it was just a real life video with some game elements overlaid on top. But this is a real game and the photorealism is actually achieved through a few pretty clever tricks to make it feel like you're looking at real footage from a body cam. This is the state of the art of computer generated graphics today. In just a couple of years, small indie studios won't even need camera tricks to make a game or a movie feel this fully immersive. But these graphics weren't generated with AI. In fact, the state of video generated with AI looks very different. In videos generated entirely by diffusion models, the pixels from one frame help inform what should be generated in the next frame. One big problem with this approach is there's no real way for them to keep track of the structure of various objects from frame to frame. As a result, you get this sort of psychedelic painting within a painting within a painting style of motion picture that's not very useful for telling a coherent story. There are a few different ways to bring those structural elements back into this kind of video. The first way is with video to video. Runway is a company that co-created the AI image generator Stable Diffusion. They have a wide set of generative tools for image and video editing. Their Gen 1 video generator takes a video as an input and then lets you edit it using text prompts and image overlays. The result keeps the structure of the input video but switches out the look and feel based on the added prompts. Likewise, Wonder Studio is an AI toolkit that automatically places computer generated characters into live action scenes. It automatically identifies individual actors and can overlay any CG character, including all relevant animations and lighting effects based on the camera's position and motion. So there are two parts to the process here, creating the actual structure and composition of the scene, and then adding in the correct skins, textures, and visual effects on top of that. Let me quickly highlight a few big innovations in each of these areas. You probably already know how fast and cheap it is to generate an image with AI tools like Stable Diffusion or Midjourney. But Runway has another tool called Infinite Image, where you can take an existing image and expand it forever using text prompts. So now you don't even need to create the whole overlay image or texture pack by yourself. You can create a part of it and then generate the rest with AI. And on the flip side, you already saw how realistic graphics can get in Unreal Engine. So one potential future workflow is where creators build the skeleton of a scene using Unreal Engine or Unity Software or Blender instead of having to build sets and film it in real life. But that skeleton doesn't have to be generated by humans either. Unreal is developing a whole suite of tools for generating entire 3D environments at scale. They do this by creating procedurally generated assemblies of different assets like stones, trees, ponds, bugs, and birds in the example of this jungle. So when a designer moves this assembly to the right, the entire assembly updates based on what's around it. And when he moves it back to the left, the entire structure changes yet again. But the real magic happens once the designer is done with this step. Just like Runway's infinite image tool can extend an image, Unreal Engine's new tools can extend entire 3D landscapes well beyond what the artist originally crafted. In this case, the designer hand built a 200 by 200 meter jungle forest, which was used to procedurally generate a four square kilometer landscape. That's 400 times larger than what the artist created by hand. Hopefully you're starting to see how all of these individual innovations can be pieced together to seriously disrupt some massive markets. And speaking of disrupting massive markets, did you know that fine art prices have more than doubled the S&P 500's total return over the last 26 years? In fact, blue chip art appreciated by 29% in 2022, while the S&P 500 went down by almost 20%. 
That's why high net worth individuals allocate up to 30% of their portfolios to alternative assets. And that's where Freeport comes in. Freeport is a U.S.-based, blockchain-friendly platform that's disrupting the art market by letting you invest in legitimate masterpieces without breaking the bank. These aren't no-name artists drawing animals on digital coins. Freeport is launching with four rare prints by the king of pop art, Andy Warhol, that have each appreciated between 6 and 16% per year for nearly a decade. This is a great way to diversify your portfolio with one of the oldest asset classes around, just like the ultra-rich have for centuries. But there's a limit of just 1,000 investors per piece. So Freeport is giving my audience exclusive early access to start investing today for as little as $200. It's very possible that these sell out fast. So check out my link in the description below today. All right, we've covered a lot so far, like how lifelike computer-generated graphics can get, even when they're made by small game studios. We talked about breaking the video creation process into two parts, the overlays like skins, textures, and visual effects, and the structure of the scenes themselves. And we talked about some innovations in both areas, like Runway's Infinite Image Tool, Unreal Engine's procedural environment generator, and Wonder Studio's ability to overlay CG characters onto real-life actors. But all of these innovations still require videos and images as inputs. Even if you were to go the extra mile and train a model only with videos similar to the ones that you want to generate, the results you would get are a strange mix of hilarious and terrifying. Here's an AI-generated beer commercial by a company called Private Island. It actually does an incredible job recreating the structure and the visual style of a typical beer commercial. But the longer you watch, the more you realize that something has gone terribly, horribly wrong. What starts out as a fairly reasonable backyard barbecue quickly devolves into an apocalyptic nightmare. Yikes! And that's where NVIDIA's latest paper comes in. At a high level, this paper focuses on carrying the structure of a scene from frame to frame which is the exact problem that these other tools are solving by requiring an input video from the user. For example, here's a time lapse of a beach during sunset. Notice how there's a consistent structure to the beach, the waves, and the clouds. It's actually the foliage that gives it away that this is a video generated by AI. Here's another clip of somebody pouring milk into a cup of coffee. Look at how much more coherent this is than some of the videos that we just looked at. It's not perfect, but it's definitely a big step up, especially considering it was generated from a single text prompt. And you can even give this model a set of input images and have it generate the structure for the whole video. For example, give it a few images of Kermit the Frog, and you can make him play the guitar. That's the exact opposite of what we saw with Wonder Studio, which needs an input video to overlay computer graphics onto. And here are a few examples of some driving sequences, which can be modified with different lighting conditions, scenery, and road conditions on the fly. So instead of needing real camera data or a high-end driving simulator, NVIDIA's technique can generate thousands of examples by using slightly different text prompts. This is a huge breakthrough in generating videos with diffusion models. Diffusion models start with random noise and then reorder pixels to form an image. Because of that, you're not really guaranteed to get two related images as you move from one frame to the next. Without getting too in the weeds, this technique fixes that by treating videos as three-dimensional images, length, width, and time. So where normal diffusion models reorder pixels in two dimensions to generate a picture of a sunset or a cup of coffee, this model reorders pixels in three dimensions to show a sun setting or a cup of coffee being poured. Another incredible feature of NVIDIA's model is that it has 4.1 billion parameters, making it around the same size as OpenAI's Dolly 2. Except NVIDIA's model can make coherent videos up to 5 minutes long. Maybe NVIDIA should take a crack at regenerating this beer commercial. That gets me every time. All kidding aside, this is NVIDIA, so don't think of this as a one-off paper. Other researchers will build on top of this breakthrough technique, and NVIDIA will keep improving on it. Just imagine the improvements that we'll see in text-to-video over the next year alone, and what it could mean for the future. It's not just video games and movies. We haven't even scratched the surface of what this technology means for industries like architecture, tourism, education, self-driving cars, and other industries that may not even exist yet. But don't just take it from me. Here's a quick clip from a recent episode of the All In Podcast, where three incredibly sharp investors lay out their vision for this groundbreaking technology. You have the ability to create characters. You have the ability to create voices. You have the ability to replicate 
a celebrity voice. The only thing that's not there yet, as far as I know, is the ability to take static images and string them together into a motion picture. But that seems like it's coming really soon. So yeah, in theory, you should be able to train the model where you just give it a screenplay and it outputs essentially an animated movie. And then you should be able to fine tune it by choosing the voices that you want and the characters that you want. And yeah, I think we're close to it. One of the things I'll say on this is we still keep trying to relate it back to the way media narrative has been explored and written by humans in the past. Very kind of linear storytelling. You know, it's a two hour movie, 30 minute TV segment, eight minute YouTube clip, 30 second Instagram clip, whatever. I actually think that the opportunity for creating new stuff in new ways is so profoundly expanding that individuals can now write entire universes that can then be enjoyed by millions of people from completely different lengths and viewpoints and, and models. They can be interactive, they can be static, they can be dynamic. And that the personalized. tooling that you, personalized, but the tooling that you as a creator now have, you could choose which characters you want to define, you could choose which content you want to write, you could choose which content you want the AI to fill in for you and say, hey, create 50 other characters in the village. And then when the viewer reads the book or watches the movie, let them explore or have a different interaction with a set of, of those villagers uh, in that village. Or you could say, hey, here's the one character everyone has to meet. Here's what I want them to say. And you can define the dialogue. You can choose the limits of how much you want the individual to enjoy from your content versus how narrowly you want to define it. And my guess is that the creators that are going to win are going to be the ones that are going to create more dynamic range in the creative output. To build on what you're saying, Freeburn, which I think is incredibly insightful, just think about the controversy around two aspects of a franchise like James Bond. Number one, who's your favorite Bond? We grew up with Roger Moore. We lean towards that. Then we discover Sean Connery. And then all of a sudden you see Daniel Craig. You're like, you know what? That's the one that I love most. But what if you could take any of the films? You could say, give me the spy who loved me, but put Daniel Craig in it, et cetera. And that would be available to you. And then think about the next controversy, which is, oh my God, does James Bond need to be a white guy from the UK? Yeah, of course and, not. You can release even, it around the world and each region could get their own celebrity, their number correct. one celebrity to play the lead and controversy over. That, that may be where yeah. we go. Like my kids want to have a 10 minute bedtime story. Well, let me give them Peter Pan at 10 minutes. I want to do you know a, a chapter a night for my older daughter for a week long of Peter Pan. Now I can do that. And so the, the way that I can kind of consume content becomes different. So I guess what I'm saying is there's two aspects to the way that I think the entire realm of content can be rewritten through AI. The first is like individual personalized creation of content where I as a user can render content that is of my liking and my interest. The second is that I can engage with content that is being created that is so much more multidimensional than anything we conceive of today, where current centralized content creators now have a whole set of tools. Now, from a business model perspective, I don't think that publishers are really the play anymore, but I do think that platforms are going to be the play. And the platform tooling that enables the individuals to do this stuff and the platform tooling that enables the content creators to do this stuff are definitely entirely new industries and models that can create multi-hundred billion dollar outcomes. I think U.S. box office is something like oh 20 God. billion a year. I remember when like it's they all got to like 100 billion a year payment volume. And now it's like hundreds of billions. <laughs> Market size of U.S. media and entertainment industry, 717 billion. Okay, it's, just, it's not insignificant. Video games are nearly half a trillion a year. All right. So hopefully this episode helped you understand the state of the art of computer graphics, 3D asset generation, and what this latest breakthrough in generative AI for video could unlock in the near future. The market for just video games and movies is hundreds of billions of dollars per year. So coherent text to video generation could unlock trillions of dollars in enterprise value, especially when you add up everything humanity already uses video for today, from architecture to education, and from tourism to self-driving cars. And to me, that's a future worth investing in. But there's one more huge disruption that you need to know about. So make sure to check out this episode next. And if you feel I've earned it, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. That lets me know to put out more research like this. Either way, thanks for watching. And until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.